Maize is one of the most important staple crops in Africa, on which an estimated 300 million people depend. However, several challenges severely undermine maize production, including drought, diseases, and insect pests such as the fall armyworm. Fortunately, many proven technologies, such as climate smart maize technologies, pest, and disease tolerant varieties, among others, have been developed by researchers worldwide to address some of these challenges. Ensuring their delivery to farmers at scale still presents a challenge as many African farmers need to be facilitated to access agricultural credit in order to eliminate their capital constraints. To address these challenges, the African Development Bank in 2018 launched Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, TAT, program. The program is an integral part of its Feed Africa strategy of 2016 to 2025. TAT's overall objective is to harness high-impact, proven agricultural technologies to raise agricultural productivity in Africa mitigate risks, and promote diversification and processing in 18 agricultural value chains within eight priority intervention areas. The program increases agricultural productivity through the deployment of proven and high-performance agricultural technologies at scale along selected nine commodity value chains, which include maize, rice, wheat, high iron bean, cassava, orange flesh sweet potato, sorghum millet, livestock, and aquaculture. These work with six enabler compacts addressing transversal issues such as soil fertility management, water management, capacity development, policy support, attracting African youth in agribusiness, and fall armyworm response. Led by African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF, the TAT Maize Compact set in motion the machinery to disseminate climate smart maize technologies, such as the elite water efficient maize for Africa, WEMA varieties, across 16 target countries in Africa. Other technologies deployed at scale include appropriate fertilizer blends, optimal maize planting density, efficient pest and weed management, post-harvest management, supportive marketing, mechanization, and good agricultural practices. To meet its target of 2 million beneficiaries, the Compact established partnerships with all key stakeholders, including governments, private sector, research institutes, commercial seed companies, farmer groups, Commodity Associations, and National Agricultural Research Systems, NARS. With smallholder farmers constituting a huge chunk of primary beneficiaries of maize technology transfer efforts, the TAT Maize Compact focalized on involving women and youths in the maize value chain, aiming at increasing their participation by 20% and 10% respectively. In partnership with 28 seed companies, four in Kenya, four in Uganda, six in Tanzania, eight in Zambia, and six in Zimbabwe, the Maize Compact has so far facilitated the establishment of 4,256 demonstration plots conducted 757 field days, distributed 84,321 free small pack seeds to boost the scale-up of over 17,340 tons of climate-smart maize seeds produced in partnership with the seed companies. Maize is the cheapest source of calories among the cereal grains, making up about 65% of total food calories consumed by households in Kenya. To meet this demand, maize is produced on 40% of the total crop area, mainly by smallholders. However, over the past decade, the average production has been well below 40 million bags, 
with the exception of 2012, 2013, 2015, and 2018. 2018 saw the highest production of 46 million bags. Maize continues to be the most important staple food in Kenya as demand is growing, driven by population growth. The demand for maize currently stands at above 50 million bags, and it has been projected to reach 60 million bags by 2025. The widening gap between demand and domestic production has placed Kenya at the epicenter of the TAT maize intervention. With concurrent visits to multiple locations along the Western Kenya corridor, namely Nakuru, Vihiga, Kisumu, and Kakamega counties, the TAT Monitoring, Evaluation, and Learning Team narrowed its focus to key value chain actors such as seed companies, millers, and farmer groups who were strategically selected to rapidly fast-track scaling up of TAT maize technologies through demo establishments, farmer field schools, processing of maize grain to sifted flour ready for marketing and consumption. Additionally, a special attention was given to three outstanding developments, namely the role of seed companies in scaling out the maize technologies, an outgrower scheme linked to an off-taker in one of the implementation sites to showcase a model of value chain analysis likely to be promoted, and the role of women and youth empowerment within the maize value chain as promoted by farmer groups. The TAT maize compacts pathway to technology scale-up is visible in its work with private seed companies for impact. This is hinged on its belief that seed companies occupy a strategic position along the maize value chain, ensuring that farmers get high quality seed to increase productivity and improve on their livelihood mechanisms. Thus, aligning essentially with African Development Bank's Feed Africa imperative on improving access to locally adapted, affordable, and readily available quality certified seeds on high yielding varieties by smallholder farmers. Through partnerships with Seed Co. Limited in Nairobi and Faida Seed Company Limited in Nakuru, the compact successfully upscaled drought-tolerant maize varieties through the establishment of 439 demos for three varieties, SC Duma 43, Sungura 302, and Punda Milia 529. It further organized three large field days in collaboration with other partners to reach 554 farmers, with 300 of these being women. The TAT Maize Compact equally held 973 small field days to demonstrate demo plots by creating awareness on the performance of the climate smart varieties. 15 radio episodes and two road shows were organized along this line. Other actions include distribution of climate smart varieties, small seed packs through three avenues, including the local development organizations, CGIAR centers, and direct sales to reach many farmers, sale of 4,500 metric tons of climate smart varieties, 160 lead farmers technically supported to promote the climate smart varieties. The partnership between the Compact and Seed Co. Limited remains a great initiative and it is lubricated through field day activities announced via social media platforms and radio stations to advocate and activate the uptake of climate smart technologies. In Nakuru, the Compact partnered with Faida Seed Company, FSC Limited, to promote drought tolerant hybrid KH500. Dash 31A. The company, which has the capacity to process 40 metric tons of seeds, provides employment to 40 casual seasonal laborers, with 80% being women for sorting, grading, and packaging, and 20% men for heavy lifting and treating the seeds. Faida Seeds is a small seed company. We are based in uh, Nakuru, Nakuru, Kenya. We mainly deal in maize seed. 
And we have a climate smart variety, which uh, is a KH531A. This is a variety that is bred by the uh, CALRO, uh, the, the national uh, breeding station in, uh, in Kenya, it's CALRO, and it's a climate smart uh, variety. It's a medium altitude variety, which takes about 120 days to maturity. Through this partnership, the compact established 30 demo plots in the long rainy seasons, two large field days organized in Injuro and Nyahururu, 19 demo plots established in the short rainy season, and 25,000 small packs of KH500-31A distributed to 10,000 farmers. The partnership with Faida Seed Company is another model of public-private partnership with the leading role played by Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, in facilitating the mapping of all drought-tolerant, disease-resistant, and high-yielding varieties across the country, as well as licensing the most promising varieties and accompanying technology. We have been involved in that in the promotion of this variety. This is the third season that we are doing the promotion. Uh, we are going about it through demonstration, establishment of demonstration plots uh, in areas where the, where the variety can do well. Uh, the reason why we are going through the demonstration route is because uh, farmers usually want to see the variety growing in the field before they adopt the variety. The TAT maize compact also brought to light a value chain model linked to farmer groups. The compact promoted this model for scaling up technologies in Nakuru County through its partnership with the Food Chain Miller Limited. The milling company provided a mechanism for farmers to link their produce to the readily available market. The miller received and distributed two tons of WE1101 seed, which is also called drought tago, to selected 15 farmers for demonstration. The results showed that drought tago is 25% more productive than other varieties, especially in mid-altitude areas. Over a short time frame, the partnership generated positive results and incentivized farmers for engagement as farmers producing volumes of drought tago are provided with a transport subsidy in order to get their produce to the miller, thereby removing a huge financial burden, often hindering farmers. With the miller's capacity to process 30 bags of 90 kilograms of maize per hour using a hammer milling machine, the TAT Maize Compact's efforts to engage farmers in post-harvest production became a promising pathway for impact at scaling. Through this partnership, the miller also provided robust capacity building support to farmers regarding post-harvest handling techniques to be able to meet the requirements of the miller. This knowledge sharing between private and public entities has helped to reduce post-harvest losses previously encountered by farmers and created incentives for better farming. The TAT Maize Compact is already moving swiftly with the scaling up of this model in other target countries. By extending its tentacles in Nairobi, the miller has opened up to the Nairobi market with a current purchase order from Unga Limited to supply 15,000 bags of 90 kilogram maize grain worth 45 million Kenyan shillings, about 450,000 US dollars of drought tago and other climate smart maize, grade one sifted flour with 13% moisture dated 10th December, 2019. The feedback that we have got from farmers whom we identified for the new variety, that's the W1101, one, they are saying that it is good in Kobe. It was the best compared to other varieties that they have been planting there earlier. Also, the yield yielded more than what they have been getting per acre with more than 17.5% mm -hmm. on average. Mm -hmm. Others on the rural, they were getting on 13% more. 
because after what we have collected, the information that we have collected from them, the variety in our area did more good on the medium attitude, more than what was on the high attitude and the lower attitudes. Also, from what we have done also, the maize, this variety, when you meet it, it is more sweet. That's the, the, the texture of the flour and also the taste of the flour is more sweet compared to other varieties that they have been, they have been planting. Because after we got maize from them, after we got the grain from them, also we basically we had to also to sell some of the flour also to them. Because you see, we have farmers who have part of their grains they do meal locally from their local hood. And now from what we had milled, we also sold to them a small bit of it. And the taste was more good compared to other varieties. For the coming season in 2020, the miller expects to scale out drought tago variety to other counties in Kenya. Farmers have been identified and registered in Gilgil Ward, Mbaruk Eburu Ward, and Malewa West Ward, among others. The finished products, grade 2 sifted flour, is basically for low-income people as well as butcheries, hotels, and restaurants. The miller is promoting e-payment system like Mpesa after supply to ensure that farmers are paid within 24 hours after delivery of their grains and have cash at hand to meet other basic needs. A pack of two kilograms of sifted flour is sold at 100 Kenyan shillings and one kilogram at 50 Kenyan shillings, affordable to all. The byproduct is sold as animal feeds, whereby a bag of 90 kilograms is sold at 300 Kenyan shillings. With the objective of driving community empowerment, TAT Maze Compact also collaborated with Rural Outreach Program, ROP, with a view to strengthening existing partnerships and scale out climate smart and water efficient varieties. In three years, we reached 35,000 farmers and those are those who are reached with the technology, with the information, with what and those who adopted the technology, mm. we were expected to have uh, around 14,000 mm. farmers, and we had 12,000 farmers mm. adopting the technology. Mm. Mm. So with the strategy we use, we can reach as many thousands as we can. Yeah. Through this collaboration with outreach actors, the compact worked with 523 groups in Vihiga and 830 groups in Kakamega with a membership of approximately 20 members per group. During the 2018 short rainy season, ROP, with support from Tat Maze Compact, established 20 demo plots for eight varieties, including WE1101. Similar record was achieved during the 2019 long rainy season with 20 demo plots established and massive field days organized with the participation of 7,117 farmers from different counties in Kenya. The 2019 short rainy season equally witnessed the establishment of 20 demo plots and three field days organized with 909 participants among which 585 were women and 324 men. We don't work in isolation. Mm. We make sure we involve the government of the day, especially now we have county government. Minister of Agriculture was devolved. We, in, we involve them. Mm. We also work with other stakeholders, mm. like uh, other organizations or NGOs around, especially during field day. We want a field day that is all inclusive. Inclusive. We don't leave out national government because we use even bar chiefs barasas, especially for sensitization on what is coming. And also when we are planning for a field day, beside our different way of approach, we also do it through administration chiefs and assistant chiefs because we know they have barasas every week. 
Mm. We also use media. The place of women and youth in the maize value chain is not lost on the TAT Maize Compact. It engaged the Western Kenya Farmers Network, led by Margaret Awinja, a lead farmer in Kakamega County, Butere Subcounty, to take technologies to scale among women and youth using the value chain model. The network engaged its members, including 200 farmers comprising women and youth who accessed and planted drought tago variety. The beneficiaries of this initiative are majorly vulnerable people living with disability and other excluded groups like albinos and widows. They formed about 15 youth groups and 20 women groups with a membership of approximately 10 members per group. We were in the field day, which was by arranged by the coordinator and Shatala, where we were a lot of farmers there. Then we had a clean field day was there. So everybody was moving around and seeing the, the seeds, the way they have germinated, they were good. So that's why we were being given to go and try so that we can see by yourself, not by just seeing there and remain. So that was the thing. In the 2019 short rainy season, the Farmers Network received 600 kilograms of seeds from the maize compact, and these were equally distributed to 12 groups at 50 kilograms per group. Each farmer received four kilograms sown on 0.5 acres, expected to harvest about five bags of nine kilograms each by the end of January 2020. Traditionally, these farmers were planting traditional varieties and OPVs, which gave them a yield of two to three bags for five kilograms sown on 0.5 acres. This wasn't successful because it was not drought tolerant and generally low yielding. The intervention of the TAP Maze Compact has led to increased yields for farmers, and this has in turn led to stronger linkage with local millers to sell their produce. Compared to the traditional variety, Kenyan maize farmers are now expecting to sell a bag of 90 kilograms of grains for 3,000 Kenyan shillings, giving them a marginal benefit of 1,000 Kenyan shillings. I planted for the first time for rain season, long rain season this year. That is somewhere in April this year. And I had to harvest in August. And I harvested and uh, compared to other varieties, that's why I've promised never to leave Tego variety, 1101 to other varieties, because compared uh, to, to give it a distinction. In spite of these recorded successes in achieving technology scale up through partnerships, impressive field days, and outreaches, there are still challenges mitigating against maize production in Kenya. Climate change is a big problem, and with the climate change, actually, I'm not saying it might hinder adoption as such, because most of the varieties that is promoting, it is, uh, it's a varieties that behave in either climate, mm. when there's rain or when there is no rain. Mm. But where the challenge is, especially when there's too much rain, mm. with the fertilizers we use, my friend, leaching will automatically take place and we cannot get what we expect. We expect. Yeah, the main challenge when you have uh, a new variety like uh, this uh, KH500 that one, which uh, is um, a relatively new variety, not, well, not widely known. Uh, farmers are usually very conservative to adopt new varieties of seed. So the, the only way in which they are able to adopt is when they actually see the crop in the field. So TAT has really enabled us to uh, establish those demonstration plots where when you're introducing the variety, you're actually showing them uh, a variety that is in the field. Mm -hmm. They're actually seeing the crop in the field. And like when you are telling them about a new variety and you're just showing pamphlets and, uh, and other literature, they are more likely to adopt if they actually see the crop. And uh, TAT has been helpful in uh, facilitating the establishment of more demo plots. My view is that the sector is untapped and we are losing a lot of money doing imports. 
like now, take for example Kenya, that we are importing lots of rice all the way from Pakistan. We are importing maize all the way from Mexico. We see these are untapped key areas whereby if we can be able to improve productivity, it could also use to see the untapped potential. We, then we improve on mode of payment. We, we have market, like you now you see we have market for the staple food, that is the maize flour. Be it now in Kenya, also, also in the neighboring countries, as the time goes by is that we have the rule of migration. We are, in, we are key in need of food. Where do we get our food from? Only when we improve the rule of livelihood, we have, we be able now to remove, to, to reverse. That's the, it can be also the urban rural migration. We can now be able to create jobs, also food, because the population of Africa, every country in Africa, have that trade of a growing population. So I see a situation whereby agricultural value chain will be one of the best if only we, be, we, we may be in a position to increase also resources, also through the government policy that every year they commit part of their budget to the agricultural sector. However, farmers are ready to uptake the drought-tolerant varieties due to intermittent drought periods during the cropping season affecting productivity. With numerous technologies on the shelf for small-scale farmers in Africa, amidst lack of sustainable access to these technologies, efforts to facilitate technology delivery at scale through programs such as TAT should be supported and promoted at all levels. Win-win partnerships with the public and private sectors as well as civil society have become necessary in order to ensure that farmers adopt and use these technologies correctly and consistently.